if we look at the the current challenges and future challenges that IT organizations are facing, <clears throat> there are quite quite a lot of things that they are have been asked to do or they're required to do, which are quite contradictive. On the one hand side, they're supposed to keep operations running, and at the same time, they're supposed to innovate the organization. They are supposed to um, accelerate the delivery of new inno innovations and keep the highest level of governance in place. Um, they're supposed to transform, at the same time they're supposed to reduce costs um, um, and that's quite challenging. And you can see that there is no, there is, there is, there is challenges in the IT organization to really get hold of how to do it. And um, we've looked at this and we really, really believe that uh, business service automation as a mindset uh, with some capability behind is a critical component in order to be able to basically resolve these contradictions and really succeed in that ambition. If you look at um, what Gartner, for instance, says about that, it, it's really about removing the siloed thinking in the IT organization, really think about the services that the customer-facing departments are supposed to provide to your end customer. As an example, if you have an online shop, how can you make sure that customers have the best experience in your online shop, completely hiding whatever complexity of your underlying organizational structure, system landscape, it shouldn't matter. It, it doesn't matter to the customer and it shouldn't matter to the way that you can provide the service. Let's give an example, uh, particularly around the eShop maybe. Um, and this is actually a process that some of our customers really do. It, it's stock replenishment and stock maintenance in, for, in a retail, for retailers. So in order to understand what business service automation can do, you need to look at those things that can break in that entire process. And, and it starts with your customers looking at the web page and what they see or looking at your uh, eShop and what they see is not accurate. For instance, they look for a particular item they want to purchase and either it appears as not available, not on stock, or it's not available in the nearest point of sale of that person so they could go and pick it up from there. If that's wrong, you already have a problem. So you always need to make sure that whatever information uh, you have is accurate and up to date at those places where your customers look at and where they want to consume your goods or services. Next to that, you need to keep that healthy status alive regarding having enough or particularly having enough items uh, enough of the right items in the right place at the right position in the right color for for the potential customer so as such that entire demand and supply supply chain process from understanding what items have been purchased to sanity checking if we have them in stock to shipping it to the retail store, to the right stores, the point of sales, to ordering what you need to have in place. All of that needs to be orchestrated in an ongoing fashion to make sure that at any point of time, your customers get what they want. And with that ongoing process, there are so many things that can, be, can break. For instance, if you think of just the start of it, from your point of sale, there is information about what items were purchased, and what items you wanna uh, you wanna replenish? If you can't really transmit that information from your point of sale to your central systems where you do the the supply chain planning, it can go wrong. It might as be as easy as somebody missed to send a file by email, and you only find out find out a day later. Or the person that well, there was maybe there is an automated process in place, but that is delayed, and it doesn't send the right at the right point of time but it sends a day later or half a day later. So you get out of date information or inaccurate information or no information at all. Then the whole rest of that chain is already broken. And, and in the same fashion, it continues. As you evaluate, for instance, evaluate when you wanna do the replenishment and you evaluate centrally which stores you wanna replenish with which items, that can go wrong. That maybe somebody needs to look at a pl an existing plan update some parameters in those planning systems to make sure that that's accurate. Maybe they forget to do it, but there is a typo, and that causes the wrong items to be replenished. And you have, along that huge process, there are so many little things that can break uh, because of the nature of the process, 
where your existing tools, your existing ERP, your existing warehouse, where your existing ETL tool somehow are in place, but somehow don't, are not orchestrated in the right fashion to make sure that the entire life cycle, that cycle of replenishment is managed properly. And that's what business service automation is really about, connecting all these dots, orchestrating that process from the beginning to end, managing all the potential ex excep exceptions that can occur in order to make sure that the quality that you want customer facing is really delivered. If you want business service automation, the biggest, the biggest lever you will have is the ability to orchestrate and bring these things together. So you, you will need automation and orchestration technology that can work across any silo, but also can automate within each silo, whatever, you, whatever silo you have, um, and, and in order to give you the best leverage. And at the same time, it must be consumable from the business department. So it's really essential to have that as with a service thinking, a service mindset in any direction with a lot of integration capability because you will have to integrate to all kinds of systems, old systems, new systems, your legacy in your data center as well as new cloud services you're onboarding and you're building and developing really to bring these pieces together. And the only way to do this is using a proper software as a service solution that was purpose built for that. Because only then you will be able to, to really support overcoming these, these boundaries, the tip natural, natural boundaries that you have in the organization, really bring an end-to-end -end, end view to it. Just to give some, some, something visual, something tangible, um, I, I was looking at one of our customers, Granger. Granger is a DIY supplier of a um, huge amount of products. They have more than 900,000 products in their catalog. And in addition to that, they had a, a very complicated landscape with 120 systems and interfaces that needed to be brought together just to fulfill the order to cash process. And that was so complicated that it took them 36 hours to do it. So not only nowadays that's a time where customers are just not patient enough, they don't, they don't accept that kind of timeline today's, it also was a problem for them regarding the gap standards and their ability to make business with the US government in that case. When we looked at it and we, we streamlined and orchestrated the order to cash process, we were able to bring it down to just six hours. And not only has that a huge impact on the customer satisfaction, it also gives them the governance and the compliance they needed. It allows them to do more business because now they are in uh, in those area, in the area where they fulfill the government requirements and they can do business with the government. And at the same time, we reduce the operational cost of executing the order to cash process. And I, I think that's an ex just one example of how um, thinking process, thinking in a business surface from a customer perspective and applying the right tool with the right capabilities combined will deliver exceptional outcomes and can secure the future of, of businesses. because. If you think of the biggest threat, the biggest threat to organizations is disruption. And the ability to be agile and to be flexible and to have these processes under control gives you more room to be in a position to react to, to possible disruptions. You can't, you can't avoid disruptions because you don't see them coming as an organization, but you are prepared to react to them, which is, which is even more important.